coverage of the state bar trial of Mike Nifong. Uh, the items tested, tested, performed, and the results of the test, correct? Like the SBI report? Yes, sir. I believe that I referenced the SBI report and just told them to, to do it that way, including those items. Okay. And that would include, that would say the results of the test, that would be te all the test results? That yes, sir. Absolutely. Mr. Knife, on positive matches are when you have DNA on an item of evidence that matches the DNA on a person who submitted a sample or a specimen. Correct? Um, is that a question? Or? Yes. That's what a positive match is, correct? I, I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure. I guess it could be. I don't know the specific definition of a positive match. but um, Is that what you understand it to mean, a positive match <coughs> when you have DNA on an item of evidence and it matches the specimen, that's a positive match. That could be one definition. I'm not, what kind of definitions are we, what's, I don't understand your question. Okay. He's just asking for your understanding. That's your understanding of a positive match with respect to DNA? You've got DNA on an evidence item and you've got a reference specimen and they match and that's a positive yes, match. Yes, sir. I guess that's, that's fine. All right. And that would not include when no DNA was found because there wouldn't be anything to match. Correct? I guess that's correct. And uh, positive matches also would not include when you have DNA that's found, but you can't match it to any of the specimens. I would assume that to be true. <clears throat> and in th this case, the unidentified male DNA did not match any of the players' DNA profiles at DNA security with respect to the rape kit items. That's correct. Can you look at exhibit 201, which is your answer in this case? You'll go to page 38, paragraph 231. I'm sorry, page, this was 201 is the document? 201. Yes, sir. And paragraph 230, 231. Paragraph 231. Mm -hmm. This is This is the motion to dismiss and answer is that that's it? it 231 you see it I haven't gotten there yet but I'm not... yes trustee 231 right. and that is uh, responding to an allegation that uh, information was not included in the May 12th report and it says uh, defendant admits that, that at the time the defendant was served with initial discovery responses on May 18th, he was aware that the underlying data of the test performed by DSI would reveal that trace amounts of DNA not matching any of the members was found on certain items of evidence tested by DSI. It goes on to say that the defendant further admits that the underlying data and reports would be available to the Duke lacrosse defendants upon request through discovery and they would have be provided with the underlying data revealing this information. Do you see that? Yes, sir. And then the following sentence says, it is further admitted that he, meaning you, knew that the DSI report was a summary report which outlined positive matches between DNA found on items of evidence and the Duke lacrosse players, correct? It does say that. And positive matches would not include male DNA found on items of evidence that did not match any of the reference specimens. I would agree that, that, that that's true. And so you knew that the report that you were providing uh, through DNA Securities did not include that information and say that it would be in the underlying data because this, that would be a positive match. This would not be a positive match, would it? Well, that would be one reading of what happened. I think that more likely it's that I um, did not notice this representation in the admissions. I, I don't believe this is what I admitted. I mean, obviously I signed it. Um, but that is not what I um, understood the report was going to be. And that was an answer, of course, filed with this commission to the complaint, correct? Yes, sir, it was. Now, in your response to the grievance committee uh, on December 28th, you talked about um, the, that information particularly, and uh, I'll, I'll direct you there so that we don't have to uh, speculate over the language. Two, it is Exhibit 233, please. 
through 33? Yes. Yes, sir. Go to page four of that, please. Yes, sir. And on the third paragraph down, it says, I readily concede that I was informed by Dr. Meehan prior to May 12, 2006, that DNA security testing of samples in this case revealed the presence on the victim of male DNA that did not match any of the cross players, correct? Yes, sir. And less than a week earlier, you had told a reporter for the New York Times, obviously anything that is not DNA from people who are charged is potentially exculpatory information. Yes, sir, there's no question it's potentially exculpatory. And it's obviously, that's what you said, that it was obviously potentially exculpatory information if there's DNA that does not match. I believe that's what I just said. Right. And in your bar complaint, you deny recognizing at the time that the unidentified male DNA on Ms. Mangum was potentially exculpatory. I thought that I denied that, I, that it was exculpatory. Right. Your, your answer, I'm sorry, to the bar complaint. Did I say that it was not potentially exculpatory or was it not specifically exculpatory? I'd make one objection. It is a pleading of a lawyer. It's not been verified. In most civil cases, you know, you have a verified pleading with a sworn statement. So, you know, this is the, the attorney's uh, work product. Okay. It's uh, a binding admission. What, what, are you, what are you referring to? I mean, if you could give me a reference. Okay. Back. One. Well, let me ask. Let me ask the question this way, Mr. Nifon. Yes, sir. When you were sitting with Dr. Meehan, and he was going through this unidentified male DNA that not, did not match any of the cross players, did you realize at the time that it was exculpatory, or at least potentially exculpatory? Well, certainly, any evidence is potentially exculpatory because the only way you can determine the exculpatory value of evidence is to view it in light of other evidence in the case. So something that may not have any obvious exculpatory value might, in light of other evidence, be exculpatory. That was kind of the basis of Collins versus Whitley. Um, the problem is, as I indicated, that there was specifically exculpatory information to test. That is, none of the DNA on these red kit items matched any of the Duke players. That is specifically exculpatory. If there had been evidence that matched with respect to the fingernail, there was uh, DNA on one of the fingernails that matched uh, David Evans, that is specifically inculpatory. Now the presence of other DNA is not specifically exculpatory because since, as Dr. As, or as I indicated, Dr. Meehan said, and I believe as he testified, you can't determine when it was deposited, how long it's been there, where it came from, then its relationship to this particular case is impossible to do. So it is, it is potentially exculpatory only because there may be some way it could be used in, in conjunction with other evidence, but it doesn't prove either that an assault did not take place or that the specific people involved in this complaint did not commit the assault. The absence of DNA evidence does not prove either that an assault took place or that a person didn't commit it. The presence of DNA from someone other than the people who are, are charged in the crime